I wish that I'd have known when I started running a triathlon that simply by switching my mindset to one that says that running and triathlon are for life rather than for a particular race or event, it would have made it so much more relaxing and enjoyable. Treat these sports like an infinite game where you don't win or lose, you just do. Then all of the setbacks that you might have along the way become a lot easier to manage. Suddenly, injuries are just part of the process. It doesn't matter, you'll compete again. And if you lose a race or even a season due to COVID, it doesn't matter. There's more to come. This is for life, not just for Christmas. Then it just becomes so much more relaxing and enjoyable. It becomes a pleasure and about the process rather than an end product. Now, before I hand on to the next person, let me just say, these people that you're going to see, this mixture of brilliant people are people that Mary and I have met along the way on our social media journey. They're people that inspire us to do better and be better. They have a passion for exercise, running, triathlon like we do. So if you've got the time, then go and find out a little bit more about them. Go and get subscribed to their YouTube channels or follow them on Instagram and just show them some support because what we want to do is build a community of people that really want to help other people. And that's what it's all about for us. And if you've found your way here because of one of them then consider following along on our journey as well in the hope that we can help you or inspire you to improve your triathlon and running right that's enough flapping my gums let's pass you over i'd recommend not spending all of your money on expensive kit and equipment too soon so my first few triathlons i did on this beautiful bike as you can see, not the most expensive bike. I then bought a second hand bike off Gumtree, I think. Um, and that took me to the age group world champs for the standard distance. And now I'm lucky enough to ride the BMC Time Machine, of which this is the road bike version, which is an absolute beaut, but you've got to work your way up there. There's no point spending the money too soon. So I'd recommend spending it on things that will help your training. So good trainers, gym memberships, and things that are really going to motivate you rather than spending it on the most expensive bike that you think you need, because you don't. It's all about the engine. Well, one thing I wish I'd learned before I actually started running is that strength and core work is a massive part of running. Um, I think us runners tend to just do mile upon mile upon mile and we actually forget about that strength and conditioning work. Those little exercises that will minutely make you a better runner in the long run, but it also prevent injury, it will prepare you for the run the next day and it also will make you an all round better runner, okay? Um, a lot of us will tend to always pick that extra mile or extra 10 minutes towards the end of the run. Think, right, I've got to get myself another mile in, right? I've got to hit this certain mileage this week. But actually just backing off and just saying to yourself, no, I'll go home. I'll do a bit more strength and core work, work on the core, work on my weaknesses to make me all round better runner. And you will perform better and feel better the next time you run. It's the little changes that make a big difference in the running world. One thing that I wish I'd known about when I first started running is that going slow is a good thing. In order to get faster, you need to go slower and that means an easy pace. So that might mean that when you're running along, you'll be able to hold a conversation if you were talking to a friend or even just say a few words out loud. The easy running not only allows you to get faster over time, it allows you to increase your distance and more importantly, it keeps you from getting injured. Now I would say that 80% of my runs are done at an easy pace and it leaves the legs free to really smash sessions and long runs and mostly run happy. So one of the things that I wish I had knew when I first started out running that I had the benefit of knowing now through experience is that consistency is key. Now, consistency for me is multifaceted in that it's not just a case of you need to go out and run every single day there's a lot of things that you learn through experience and it's like 
So, in order to be consistent, first of all, you need to build up a certain element of conditioning. Now, your fitness levels will go up quicker than what your conditioning levels were. So, always be aware of the niggles and the injuries that you pick up. Try not to run through them. If you run through them, it will generally be detrimental to your training. One piece of advice from me is to book an event or a race at some point in the future that's far enough away that you've got long enough to train and feel ready but that keeps you accountable and keeps you motivated and gives you a really clear goal to work towards. My first one was the 10k pancake run in Florida and the nerves and the adrenaline and the excitement and the build-up was awesome and such a sense of achievement that it motivated me to keep going and enter more events so find a good one and go for it. So they say running is the most accessible sport in the world and they're not wrong but one of the things I wish I'd known when I started running is that there's different trainers for different things. You've got all sorts of types of shoes for different things. You've got easy day shoes which are nice and comfortable and cushioned for logging lots of miles You've got the super duper carbon fiber plated racing marathon shoes. All in all, when you add up all these trainers, it can get very expensive. You've got really grippy shoes for the trails. You've even got shoes with spikes for the track. But as a beginner, well, what you really need to do is pick a pair of shoes that's really comfortable for you. There's lots of trainers out there and there are ones that do different things and it can become a bit of a minefield. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, try and find a shoe that suits you. Do your research and try and fit the purpose of the shoe with the purpose you need it for. Hi Ben, one thing I wish I'd known when I first started triathlon is the importance of nutrition. So for me, it was all about quantity, not quality. Now I know that getting the right food in me can help me recover quicker and it can also help me in my training when I'm really pushing hard. And that's something I wish I'd paid more attention to at the beginning. Although I'm not saying that having a pizza isn't forbidden every so often. The one thing that I wish that I'd known when I started out was that it's not about running fast every single run. I incorrectly felt like if I wasn't beating yesterday's Strava time, then I wasn't progressing. And that's just the complete wrong mindset. In fact, by running fast every day, all you're going to end up doing is becoming injured, is burning out. And actually what you need to do to progress is to mix up your training, incorporate those long, slow, easy runs to build your base level of fitness, those zone two heart rate runs, those intervals, a little bit of speed work, throw some hills in there, really mix it up. And for me, it's once I started incorporating a whole variety of training that I saw my race pace, my speed, my overall fitness start to improve. Well, that's it from me. Hi. So the one thing I think I wish I'd known when I first started running was how valuable trails are to your overall running performance. Um, trails, because of the undulating and uneven terrain that you're often on with branches and mud and rocks, etc., um, really helps with your core strength and agility. Um, and often because of quite a few hills involved, at least on the ones I go on, um, it helps with your overall leg strength as well. So I would say hit the trails from that point of view. And mm, probably one of the most important to me anyway, is the fact that it's a great um, stress reliever in terms of you're out in nature and that just helps me to unwind as well. So I think for the, the mental benefits, as well as the physical, you must hit the trails. And over to you. Cool. And that's it, 10 pieces of advice from 10 people that have been in the game for a little while. Just trying to set the camera up here. And if you want a sneaky 11th piece of advice, then it's this, if you are in this for life, if you do find yourself in triathlon and running going longer and longer, just be prepared that at some point in your training career, you're gonna shit yourself. Sorry, but I think it's probably worth you knowing that early doors. And if you want to discover any of the creators that have helped me put this video together, then I've made it as easy as possible for you by putting all of their information in the description for the video so that you can just click and find and subscribe or follow. And if you've come from them to here, then consider sticking around and hopefully we can help you out as well. We're just trying to expand a network of people that want to help 
other people. And coming up next week, something pretty exciting because I managed to get Mary and me a pair of the next new Nike Zoom Alpha Fly next percent. I don't, it's a mouthful, but we managed to get them. So we're going to do a review. I hopefully managed to surprise her with them. And that is coming hot on the heels of a surprise when I got Mary a Garmin Vivo Active 4S a couple of weeks back. Videos here, I think, or here. I never, never remember where but it's one of these places. I hope you learned something today because honestly, I did too, some really good information. Right, see you next week. Oh, I forgot I'm not throwing it to anyone.